friends, Jawless Paul here. In this video, I'm going to be going over the heat system, the Pact of Punishment, and uh, just talking about the, the various options that you have to increase your heat. In this game, uh, with the bounty system, you have to keep adding heat to your runs in order to get more bounties, um, more blood, more diamonds, and more ambrosia. And you need those things to upgrade your legendary keepsakes. You need them to... Um, buy various upgrades in the the contractor in the in the house of Hades, and you need it to most importantly get the weapon aspects. Uh, weapon aspects require require that you have um, that you have blood. Blood, I'd say, is the most important thing, and it's actually the thing that you get the most of uh, in the game as you're playing. Um, if you if you beat the Fury Sisters on a certain heat setting, uh, you get one blood, and then if you kill Hades on that heat setting, um, you get one blood. Now, an important thing to note is that when you, if you set, if you set your heat at a certain level, you set your heat at a certain level, and you get through the first two bosses, but then you die. Um, the next time you play through, you will only get darkness for those first two bosses, and you won't get any more diamonds, blood, or ambrosia until you beat the game, until you beat Hades at that level. So that's just something to keep in mind. You may get stuck, and so you want to, you know, kind of experiment. But that's why I made this video. I wanted to show you guys what I, how I think about each of these, how difficult I think that they are, um, what are some kind of good combinations, what are some bad combinations to, to get, uh, and hopefully this is helpful. Before I continue, though, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, another Hades content creator, Daddy DeGrand. So he he kind of, I think, is one of the best uh, masters of the heat system. There's a, there's a couple other guys out there, too, but Daddy DeGrand is, is uh, he's, he's my favorite. Um, so, you know, just shout out to him. Maybe check out his channel and, and give him some love. Um, anyway, so we've got Hard Labor. Hard Labor, you can rank up to 100%. Uh, each, each level gives you... Um, plus 20% damage from foes. Uh, this is one that I don't take very often. It's it's pretty tough. Uh, so that's a lot of extra damage if you think about, you know, some of the hits that you get from Hades uh, himself, especially. That That is very difficult to deal with. I mean, it's difficult to deal with anywhere. It, it If you are the type of person that really likes to run with the butterfly, this is kind of a perfect combination because... The butterfly rewards you for not um, getting hit, and so you want to avoid getting hit here, obviously. Um, if you are very, very good at um, dashing away and um, kind of you're, you're very precise, this is this is a good a good one for you. But I wouldn't say that this is uh, the best one to take <laughs> by any by any means. Lasting consequences uh, removes healing, so one one rank is 25% up to four ranks at 100%. That means you do not get to heal at all in the game. So sandwiches don't heal, um, fountains don't heal, your you know room to room, that, that three health that you get does not heal you. Um, the percentage increase from uh, Demeter shouldn't heal you either because you're, you're uh, increasing healing uh, when it's at when it's at zero percent, right? You have zero percent healing. There's a couple uh, notable exceptions to this. Things like centaur hearts; those will still give you 25 health, and so in essence, it's a it's like a heal. Death defiance that still provides healing, right? So lucky tooth. That's this is you know a very very large uh, source of healing. No hydrolite, no eye of lamia. Those things do not work anymore with that. So you might imagine that getting hard labor and lasting consequences together is a bad, 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 bad deal. Um, this is not how I would start out uh, doing these two. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I, I almost never do them unless I'm really trying to push it. Convenience fee raises prices by 80%. That can be punishing. That one is actually one of the ones I recommend for beginners. So I'll put a little little uh, marker there to show you that that's a, this is a good one for beginners. Um, because you can play the game without spending any money at all. Uh, it's easier if you spend money, but you don't need to. You you can you can avoid it, or you know, e spend money. You know, e even at eighty percent, it's not like things are impossible to to buy. So you can still go to shops and and buy things. You just can't buy as much. So that's convenience to be a, a good one. Uh, jury summons sixty percent at, at max rank gives you three three heat and sixty percent. Uh, more foes in standard encounters. Now this is important. It used to be that jury summons brought in extra champion uh, enemies in those in the champ rooms and in like mini boss rooms. Uh, there were more 
more foes there. And that was terrible. That was really, really awful. No one could take, I mean, almost no one would take jury summons because it was just way too punishing. Um, this one, I, I, you could take a, a rank in it maybe um, and try it out. Or, you know, just try it, see, see just how much more. <laughs> if you get, if you get a really good, like, um, a high, high damage AOE uh, build, like Aspect of Chaos is, it, it can handle it a little bit better than maybe other options, um, or just any any large AOE uh, build uh, does better against them. But this is one of the tougher ones, I'd say. It's not. It doesn't. Um, I don't think it synergizes with anything particularly well. Um, so I I wouldn't necessarily put uh, put this as my top choice. Extreme measures. This is one that I always run with, and I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you why. So the first rank is is one. And then the, the next two are, are each two heat. So that gives you five heat. Extreme measures uh, changes the way uh, the bosses uh, work. So the Fury Sisters, um, it's no longer the Fury Sister. You, you don't fight one at a time anymore. You always fight at least two of them at a time. And what that means is there's still only one sister that you need to kill, but the others will pop in and do damage to you and make circles on the ground that you have to dash away from uh, and so it, it makes it significantly tougher there's a lot more things going on on the screen as a matter of fact I think I'd say the, the hardest part about the, that first fight is just the, the sheer number of, of graphics going on and just not being able to see anything like just not not <laughs> being able to do or see anything very well yeah, it makes that tough and then the second fight Hydra head Basically, the Hydra, the Hydra fight is the same, except that the the arena is much smaller, and the arena has lots and lots of lava in the middle, uh, and the so the Hydra is actually sitting in lava, and so this is very dangerous. Uh, it's very dangerous to fight uh, to fight in this one. I'd say it makes it tougher. Now it, the same strategy applies though for the Hydra fight. You wanna, you know, when the when the smaller heads come out. You know, especially on the second phase or the last phase, you want to kill some Hydras in a specific area so that you have kind of a safe zone to dash away to. And then the third one, the third one is the toughest, I think, um, that makes Asterius and Theseus uh, both have like armor and then Theseus has a chariot that he rides around and just shoots bombs at you all the time and occasionally charges through the middle shooting a machine gun. How how they got away with putting that in, I don't know. It's it's a it's basically he's got a little tank. And then Asterius has his leap attack has area, so it does a splash when he lands. You can't just dodge away; you have to dodge far, far away. Otherwise, you will take that extra damage. Um, and then he has this spin, this spin attack that's like so huge, and he just chases you around with it. And that's extreme measures. I use extreme measures all the time. Um, do I recommend it for new players? Not, I wouldn't say these are the first points that you should put in. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the reason why I use extreme measures all the time and why I think it's a good one to start getting used to. First of all, it has, um, for the Theseus, Asterius, um, the start of those fights and the start of the, um, the Fury Sisters, you have new, you have new dialogue, um, between them and that's kind of cool. And new graphics, you know, they have new stuff. Oh, I should also mention, um, Extreme Measures 3 also makes your, if you fight Asterius one-on-one, -on -one, he has the armor, he has the splash attack, he has the spin. It's all, it's all there. So it's, that makes it, that, that makes that a little bit tougher too. Um, and maybe that's, you know, you get, you get two points for that. So why do I use this? I use this because once you get used to it, it's, it's no longer... You know, it's no longer a, a difficulty or an increased difficulty for you. Um, you can just you get used to it and you start playing in a certain way that that makes it not so not so big a deal. So I, that's why I like extreme measures a lot. I also just like the way it, it makes the the boss fights a lot more challenging, a lot more interesting. Um, yeah, I like it. It's it's good. One, I'd say there's one advantage to um, extreme measures. Well, two advantages. I'll I'll list two that I think that I can think of right now. The first one being in the Hydra fight, the smaller arena actually makes it so your area of effect attacks will kill more heads or like will do damage to multiple heads more often, right? When it's that huge arena, the Hydra heads are so far apart that you, you know, you really, it's hard to kill two at a time. Whereas 
in the in the extreme measures arena, you're killing two heads. I mean, you're doing damage to two heads if you have any area damage attacks. So that's that's a, an advantage to that. And then in the Theseus Asterius fight, this is arguable whether it's really an advantage. But I always found that the fact that Theseus had a shield for so long was like painful. I hate I hate fighting enemies with shields. And so um, in the in the chariot, he does not have a shield. So in some ways, that makes it easier. I, I kind of go back and forth on that one. At first, I thought it was easier. Now I think, holy crap, that that is a tough fight. <laughs> that one's that one gets me a lot. All right, calisthenics program. Each rank gives your foes fifteen percent to their life total. I think this is a terrible. Um, this is a terrible one. This is maybe one of the worst ones that you can take. Uh, and the reason is, it also applies to champions, and it also applies to bosses. It applies to armor. Um, it's just it's a lot more it's a lot more health and so calisthenics program just makes the game go way longer your boss fights will take super super long um you know even a super powerful build you you won't i i would never run calisthenics program with tight deadline for instance because that's you're never going to be able to get through in that timeline so i i avoid calisthenics program altogether i i don't think I think on my 32, I have I have beaten the game once with at 32 heat. Of course, there's no video video proof, but I have the statues, so you can tell that I did it. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I I avoided calisthenics program altogether, and it's only two heat. It's two heat that you know it's it's not really even worth it in my opinion. All right, middle management. Middle management is a tough one. Um, it's uh, it changes all of your champion room fights. It makes all of those little fights more difficult. The two in Asphodel, the uh, the barge of death, will have a ton of a ton more enemies, lots and lots of enemies. And then the fight against the Dusa and Skull Crusher, uh, that one becomes really tough. The Dusa teleports around the room. The Skull Crusher, when he lands, sends out a shockwave that fills the whole screen you have to dash through it to avoid the damage and that's a lot of damage it's it's a lot you you don't want to take uh, you don't want to take that damage it's bad news middle management is a tough one for sure i wouldn't take it unless um you're ready for a, a challenge but it, in the same way that it, extreme measures works right like if you can get used to it then it's then it's two two additional heat points that you don't ever have to think about again you just leave it on and and you start getting getting used to it all right Underworld Customs. Underworld Customs requires you to sacrifice one boon on leaving each underworld region. Um, this is a this is a tough one because typically typically I don't want to sell or remove any of my any of my boons when I and even for a lot of money I wouldn't I wouldn't sell it. Um, so this is a tough one and basically you can really sacrifice a lot. Now if you're using if you're using a if you know you're going to go in with an attack build or a special build. I mean, you can grab boons that you know you don't want in an, you know in packs that you don't really care about, um, and hope that that's what shows up in the little like boon sacrifice altar or whatever. But it's uh yeah it's a it's a challenging one for sure. I don't like I don't like underworld customs. I don't take it. Um, it is two points, and you know maybe some people that's like their style. They want a real lean build, but I mean all those all those little power advantages that you can grab. In the game are super important so really it just gives you um three fewer boons by the time you get to hades which that's you know that's significant so this is one of the tougher ones um, that you can take forced overtime okay so uh two two points gets you six uh gets you six heat points uh on your heat gauge so this is the one that i take all the time this is so the reason why i like this one a lot well it's six points first of all it's six points and it's 40 percent. it used to be 50 percent um i think for only five points so it this one has gotten better actually or easier forced overtime makes all enemies uh move and attack 20 percent faster it is very very scary the first time you try it and it's maybe you know it's scary the first like 20 times you try it or 30 or 40 times but eventually you get used to this and what's great about it is you once you put this on and you're just that's how you play the game the game just runs that at that uh, at that speed and it's not it's not a, a burden anymore right in the same way that extreme measures kind of feels like it's it's easy <laughs> it's easy oh by the way extreme measures is one that i that I'll, I'll put a little thing by um i think that that's a that's a good one if you're trying to up your heat um but then forced overtime yeah you just get used to it so i 
I would almost recommend, because it's six points, I mean, that's a ton. Um, I would just recommend getting used to forced overtime and just make it part of your part of your deal. So um, it, it makes the game significantly tougher when you're first doing it, but eventually it's kind of like, eh, it doesn't even, doesn't even phase you. So yeah, I leave that on all the time. And then heightened security. Uh, it used to be you could go up to 800%, but you can't anymore. It's only 400%. Um, it's one point for 400%. Remember, remember that purple arrows, <laughs> I think, do 20 uh, at, at 0%, right? So you multiply that by 4. You're losing death defiances to purple arrows. You're losing death defiances to spike traps. Um, at least I am. <laughs> this also applies to lava. So you standing in lava will make you uh, deal or get damage a lot quicker. A lot of people swear by this one. I do not. I I am too klutzy <laughs> to handle heightened security, um, so I don't I don't use it at all. Um, but it's it's another point. If you're trying to get to 32 heat, you you're gonna take a lot of things that you're not happy about, and heightened <laughs> security will probably be one of them. All right, but I don't recommend it. First, personally, I don't. All right, budget cuts. Budget cuts, you can get <laughs> five points. Uh, for five points, you can reduce your mirror's maximum benefit to 500 heat or 500 darkness. Uh, this one is awful. I think this one's pretty terrible. But truthfully, you can get you can get um, a lot of what you really need um, with a thousand darkness. I'll show you what I mean. Um, so you. You want to get two dashes. You know, you want... Um, ideally, you want... Well, two death defiances is probably probably sufficient. Um, I would get privilege status. Um, and then you could get, you know, thick skin. And you can get, you know, boiling blood or something. But my point is, you've got... That's, that's most of what you need um, in the game. The game won't feel terribly different with that. Um, you know, the two death defiances is, is difficult, um, or whatever, but with a thousand, with a thousand, you don't feel terribly crippled. Um, 500 would be tough. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do that, but I don't use this at all. I like using all of my, I like using all of my darkness. Yeah. So that's, that's budget cuts. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. It's not one that I choose uh, very often at all. All right. Damage control. So damage control basically makes the first two instances of damage uh, negated entirely. It works similarly to armor. If you think about it this way, armor makes it so enemies can't be stunned. This also makes it so enemies can't be stunned for the first two hits. And then you have to take take down their their um, their armor and their health. Uh, this, this is not a big deal at all in any build that has lots of little little bits of damage right like a a uh, a Dionysus build or a um, even just like a sword attack build is is pretty decent with this um, not I wouldn't do this with big bursty damage <laughs> I wouldn't do this with uh, Hestia rail um, you might be a little bit disappointed by that you might end up you know whiffing a few of your um, big shots which you really don't want to do um, I wouldn't do it necessarily with a cast unless you had, um, I think Ares cast would work fine, but the other ones, uh, actually Demeter's cast would be just fine with it. I'd take those out pretty fast, but yeah, you just want little, little bits of damage and, um, not, you, you don't want to focus on burst. Otherwise you're going to maybe disappoint, be disappointed. You can get burst and then just mind, be mindful of like taking out the blue hearts first. And then use your burst, but I don't know. I, that's that's kind of the way I think of it. It's not that big a deal. Two points. It's not going to really affect things all that much. A lot of people like it and, and leave it on uh, all the time. I don't necessarily. Um, all right. So now we've gotten to <laughs> the worst one. No choice. This is the most crippling. This is the most crippling uh, pact of punishment deal you can take. You are you have no choice in the boons you you can take. You have no choice in the hammer upgrades you take. You you have no choice in what you upgrade out with palms. You have no choice. <laughs> it stinks. It's pretty it's pretty lame. Um, I I almost never take this. Even in my 32 heat run, I was like, nope, no way. I mean, it's five it's five points. That's a lot, but 
it, it is so crippling. It's kind of fun to do as like a novelty thing. Like, can I beat the game without choosing anything for myself? Just kind of, you know, just take whatever the game gives me. Obviously, you can choose which door to go through. And that's in some ways, it's like you, you got some choice there. But um, yeah, it's it's a it's kind of a, a bummer. So yeah, I don't I don't ever take that one. That's a that's a no, no tight deadline, tight deadline. I take all the time. Um, pretty much every run will be maxed tight deadline. It synergizes really nicely with forced overtime because forced overtime typically means you're going to kill uh, enemies faster. So they're they're going to spawn in faster, and uh, it's a if you if you want the game to go fast, you use forced overtime, and then that synergizes with tight deadline. It's it's a nice little it's a nice little combination right there. Um, tight deadline though um, can be really really bad if you have jury summons. It can be really bad if you have calisthenics program. Um, so the way that, okay, so I should explain how tight deadline works. So you've got seven minutes each, each biome, seven minutes to get to the end. And if you don't, if you don't beat the boss in seven minutes, it'll start ticking down your health every second um, by five. So five, you'll take five damage every second um, that you're over your deadline. Um, it, you won't. It doesn't instantly mean you're gonna lose the run. I've, I get. I very often I get. I get to the end of my seven minutes in Elysium, and I'm fighting Asterius and Theseus, and I'm also taking that five damage. It's, it happens a lot, and you can still win a run with that. It's not like the end of the world, but it's it's frustrating. Tight deadline. I'd say in Elysium especially, it's it's super super frustrating because that that biome just takes a lot longer than the other ones for some reason. I mean, I, I well. It's because you have to kill, you often have to kill enemies more than once because they respawn, <laughs> they just, they regenerate or whatever. So um, you just have to be careful with this one, especially in Elysium. But I leave it on all the time. It's another thing where I just, I've gotten used to it. I don't dilly dally between screens. So if I'm fighting and I you get to the end, I immediately, I try to be right where the, you know, I try to hit the, the God node or whatever it is that we're getting uh, as a reward. I click on that immediately because, and then I and then I think about what I need to do, because once that screen is up, the timer stops going. There's a few things that few things that stop the timer. Um, going to uh, Sisyphus's room, going to Eurydice's room, or uh, Patroclus's room. Those will all stop the the deadline. Fishing. If you get to the if you get to the fishing node, it will stop the timer. It'll stop the timer for that. Um, so there's a few ways to, to stop it between like in that little room between bosses or after you've killed the boss, um, it will stop counting down at that point too. Uh, so there's, there's little, there, there's pockets of time where you can stop and think you just have to utilize, utilize those, um, better and, and don't dilly dally between things. If you're, if you're not sure, uh, sure which door to go through, pause the game for that too. Um, that will be, that's a, that's a good thing. Um, so these are the three that I almost always run. And the reason the reason is just because you can get used to these. These are like those you can um, you can manage without too much trouble with with those. Um, some would argue that I could get used to hard labor. But the trouble with that is if I make a mistake with hard labor, my mistake does so much <laughs> just does so much to uh, hurt my run. Um, same with lasting consequences. If I make lots of mistakes, if I go, if I, if I take too much damage in a room and then I can't heal it back up very well, it just really, it, it can snowball the, the, <laughs> it, it can snowball the mistakes you make and the poor choices that you make, uh, tremendously. So I, I don't see that as the same, um, very much. Whereas like, I just get used to forced overtime. I get used to the way enemies move. I get used to their timings. I can dash away from big attacks because I know exactly when they're going to come, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so yeah, it, I some I think I've thought about that before. Like, why do I why do I prefer forced overtime to hard labor or lasting consequences? Well, it's because I can get used to it. That's main the main thing. If I were to if I were to increase my heat um, from this point, which I need to, right? If I'm gonna if I'm gonna get another bounty with the shield of chaos. I might add convenience fee. I might add middle management. Um, those are both um, not too bad. I might add um, I might add damage control. That's another one that I don't really mind too much. Uh, 
jury summons jury summons can be fine if you have the right build for it if i'm planning to do like a build where i do lots of area damage which tend to be very strong builds um jury summons can be okay but 60 percent more foes is a ton <laughs> that is so so difficult to deal with the calisthenics program i almost would never take that um just because of how bad it is for for boss fights um yeah, so that that's my my basic uh, rundown of the different heat options that you have and my my thinking on them. Um, leave a comment below if you if you like or dislike them. If you think that I'm full of baloney, full of malarkey, and you you want to tell me about it, please please leave a comment. I'm I'm super super excited to hear from you specifically because uh, I'm sure there are people who have even more experience with this and and new ideas and want to uh, enlighten me and all of you as well. So please leave that comment. We are waiting with bated breath uh, to hear what you have to say about that. Um, friends, take it easy and we'll catch you in the next time. Ooh. Oh, I think we got him. It's hard to believe, but I think we got him. Look at all that damage. What? <laughs>